Hey, welcome. Uh, today I want to talk about solving linear equations. Now, one problem I do see when, with any of my students is when you have the variable, in this case x, on the right side, we're used to reading from left to right. So my first thing, what I'm going to do on this kind of a problem, this 5 equals 10 plus x, is I'm going to change it to 10 plus x equals 5. All I'm doing is flipping it around the equation. It does not change anything, uh, so you can do this. Now, once I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect this x, because I'm going to solve for it. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this 10 or cancel it out. So since it's positive, I'm going to do opposite and make it negative or subtract it. And if you do it to one side, you always have to do it to the other. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to take my 5, subtract 10, and I get negative 5. Now, I do know when we, uh, a couple of ways to think about this is, think of that negative 10 as you owe me money, if, and that 5 as you pay me back $5 of it. That means you still owe me 5. Or another way you can look at it is, 5 minus 10, since it's going to be a subtraction problem, just subtract 10 minus 5, and since that 10 is the bigger number, it's got that negative, your answer is going to be negative 5. Now, what I urge us to do on these, I'm not going to do it on every one of these, but what I would do is I would just go ahead and check your work. So my original equation is 5 equals 10, and what I'm going to do is for that x, I'm going to put in minus 5. So now 10 minus 5 is... 5, that is a true statement, so that means we did this part of it correctly. Now notice the 5 equals 5, it has to equal for this equation for your answer to be correct. If you get something like 6 equals 5, or maybe 10 equals 5, then you know you've made a mistake somewhere in the, in the problem. So now what I'm going to do... I'm going to do another one similar to this. So if you want to, you can pause this at any point, and then you can check my work with yours. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to do the same thing. I'm going to take 9, 19 plus X, and I'm going to flip it to the left side, and I'm going to flip the negative 6 to the right side. Now, I'm going to protect this x. By doing that, I'm going to subtract 19 on both sides because 19 is positive. So you do the opposite, so you subtract. And I'm going to subtract 19 in on the other side. x equals squat. Well, now, if you owe me 6 and owe me 19, you owe me a total of 25. If the sides are the same, you can add the number and keep the sign. But just re remember that I hear this a lot, two negatives make a positive. Well, that is true only in multiplying and dividing numbers. So real quick, if you want to check this, I'm going to say negative 6 equals 19. For that plus x, I'm going to change that to a minus 25 or a negative 25. Negative 6 equals 19 minus 25. That also gives you a negative 6. That is a true statement. So now I'm going to come up to a problem like this. Now some of us are probably thinking to ourselves, okay, what do I do? How do I approach this? You know, what do I need to move? Because I, I see two different variable or two variables on different side of the equations or the equal signs. So my rule of thumb is this. I look at the more positive, in this case it's the 10. So I want to move this neg or minus or this 9 by making this a minus 9x. I'm going to put this on both sides. So now this leaves me x minus 9 equals 4. One more step I need to do is I need to have this minus 9 move it over to the 4 by adding it. So that cancels each other out. Then I'm going to say x equals 4 plus 9 equals 13. Now, if you go ahead and put this in your equation, 
they both uh, come out correct on both sides of the equation. You should get, if you put 13 in for X, you should get 121 equals 121. Okay, next. I want you all to look at this 12x minus 11 equals 10x minus 3. You want to pause this and then come back to see if you did this correctly. So now in this one, I'm looking at my 12x and my 10x. The 12 is more positive. So what I want to do is I want to subtract 10x on both sides. So I get 2x minus 11 equals minus 3. Now I'm going to protect this 2x, so that means I need to get rid of this negative 11 or this minus 11 by adding it on both sides. So now 2x, the negative 11 and positive 11 cancel each other out. That gives you on the other side 11 minus 3, which is 8. And finally, what I want to do is if you can recall any number, which is a coefficient in front of a variable, in this case, x. So this is like saying 2 times x. So you do the opposite of multiplication. You divide. In this case, x equals 4. And if you do plug in 4 on both of the x's, you do come up to be... 37 equals 37, it is, it does work. So if somehow you do not get the 37 on either side, that means you've probably multiplied or maybe divided. You've done some kind of a mistake. Now, this is where a lot of my students kind of shut off a little bit, shut down, because we have fractions. Well, this one's, I'm making this a little bit simple because if you look at the denominators, they are both five, which is good. We can work with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my x's with the fractions in front of them, and notice that three-fifths is positive. The negative two-fifths is negative. So I'm going to move this negative two-fifths by adding it, two-fifths x, I'm going to add it to both sides. And what happens is you get now, with fractions, remember, when they have the common denominator, you can add the top number or the numerator, so 3 plus 2 is 5, but then you keep the denominator the same. So I got 5 over 5x plus 6 equals 8. Now, the 5s cancel each other out. So you're left with x plus 6 equals 8. So I've got my x here. I want to subtract 6 on both sides. In this case, x equals 2. Okay, now, the final one of this section we have three and then parentheses x minus two minus, and then in parentheses four minus five x equals seven x. So there's, there's a few things we need to recall. One is anything in front of the parentheses we can distribute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this three and I'm going to distribute means I'm going to multiply three times x is three x. 3 times, treat that as a negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Now, if you minus a parenthesis, you could treat that as a minus 1 or a negative 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4, and then negative 1 times negative 5x. So two negatives in this case makes it positive. So negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive or a plus 5x. And we still have the 7x. Now the first thing that we had to know is how to distribute. Now 
The next step is combining like terms. Now, I can combine like terms on the left side. On the right side, I don't have anything to combine with the 7x right now. So what I want to do is I want to do this. I'm going to put one underline under the variable, in this case, the x. And I'm going to put two underlines under the numbers because I'm going to combine those. So if I look at my 3x and my 5x, that gives me a total of 8x. My negative 6 and a negative 4, think if you owe me 6 and owe me 4, you owe me. So it's minus 10 or a negative 10 equals 7x. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I want to take my neg 7 and I'm going to subtract it on both sides, subtract 7x. And that gives me x. But then I want to take this minus 10. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So that gives me a positive 10. This is my answer. So my next set of videos I'm going to put on here in a few minutes will be doing some more equations like this. I hope this video has helped us a lot because this does give you an audio and a video explanation. And that concludes this part of solving linear equations. Thank you very much.